I've also got some experience in the rehabilitation side of uh, the pipelines. The agenda today will include an introduction to pure technologies. We'll take a look at what condition assessment is and involves. We'll look at the different pipe types that we would see in power plants. The different technologies or the suite of technologies available from pure technologies. The different delivery platforms that are available for us to execute these inspections. The integrated approach that we offer using our engineering analysis team. We'll take a look at a quick sample report for pre-stressed concrete pipe and there'll be time for question and answers. I just wanted to um, let the um, viewers know that on your screen you may see against your name a little hand icon. If for whatever reason the audio or visual is not clear to you, please send us a quick message and we'll try to improve at this end. But it looks like everything is working okay. Also, if you've got any questions, you can type the questions and I'll try my best to address the questions within the given time. This is what our world looks like. Pure Technologies is a global organization with offices in all the continents. We have worked with major water and wastewater utilities for past 20 years. The company is publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Here's what we do for infrastructure asset management. We provide the inspection, assessment, monitoring, and management of large diameter pipes, and we've been doing that for over 20 years. Over the 20 years, <coughs> excuse me, Pure Technologies has emerged as a global leader in providing the inspection and assessment of large diameter water and wastewater mains. <coughs> we have technologies to detect leaks in water and wastewater pipelines. One of the technology in the last few years has also been used in the oil and gas pipelines. Through our sound print and acoustic fiber optic monitoring, we have been monitoring bridges and structures also. <coughs> over the years, we have inspected over seven and a half thousand miles of pre-stressed concrete pipe and we're counting. Some of our clients include major water and wastewater utilities, major power producers, and that's what is of interest uh, for, for today's topic oil and gas pipelines, mining industry, pulp and paper, bridges, as well as commercial structures. What does condition assessment mean? It starts off with a program putting under an asset management system that allows us to take a look at what the critical assets are. It follows up with a desktop study a desktop study includes construction information, specifications, as-built drawings, soil and groundwater data, operating data such as pressure, surges, valve operation, ARVs, and maintenance, repair data, or any kind of failure that may have occurred. Through desktop study, we would be able to find what are the critical pipes that need to be planned and prioritized for inspection. The next step would be to run some kind of an inland inspection program that we offer. And we'll take a look at what those in inspection programs are. This would be followed by the engineering analysis where we would take all the information taken from desktop as well as inspection and put it together into a finite element model. I've put a quick slide here for, for uh, a, a scenario let's say a, a pipeline in a power plant fails that interrupts the service or the ability of the power producer to produce the power in that unit. For instance, at five cents per kilowatt hour, and if it's a thousand megawatt power plant, the per day loss or per hour in the per day loss would amount to approximately $1.2 million. If it takes approximately 10 days to put the pipe back in service, and, and fire up the plant, by that time that operator or the plant has lost approximately $12 million. So what we do by providing inspection services is we want to find the weak link in the chain. No longer 
is a pipe required to be replaced completely through the use of inspection technologies and engineering evaluation, we're able to find those weak links and go ahead and repair or replace those weak links before they fail. The traditional approach used to be that the pipe owners would wait for the failure and then replace the pipe. For the water utilities, this is no longer an option that they desire. We've seen a number of uh, areas where the pipes have failed and catastrophic failure has occurred. Through doing an inspection program, a condition assessment program, we will help the pipe owners find the weak links so that they can repair and replace the pipe and manage the risk. Some of the pipeline technologies that we offer, the first one is electromagnetic or EM. The EM or the electromagnetic inspection is geared towards the pre-stress concrete pipe or PCCP and that's the pipe that we mostly see in, uh, in the power plants. Magnetic flux leakage is for metallic pipes. We also offer CCTV, laser and sonar inspection through our robotic systems. Acoustic leak location through SmartBall and Sahara, these are the two patented process that we have for inline inspection. We also offer monitoring through acoustic fiber optic monitoring or acoustic arrays. And then we have the engineering services that takes all the inspection data and puts it together into a, an engineering or a structure analysis report. Let's take a look at some of the most common types of pipes that we see in the power plant. The PCCP or the pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe. These are the large diameter pipe that are attached to the cooling towers. These are the intake and discharge water lines. You could have reinforced concrete pipe. Sometimes there could be large diameter steel pipes. Small diameter ductile and cast iron pipes are also there in power plants. Occasionally there'll be plastic pipes. And then rarely there'll be the asbestos cement pipes. Let's take a look at what electromagnetic inspection entails. Electromagnetic inspection is geared to concrete pressure pipes. They, under, this, under the AWWA, it is classified as C301. It can be line cylinder, embedded cylinder, non-cylinder pipe, or the C303, which is the bar rep pipe, or the BWP. The electromagnetic inspection will detect wire breaks in pre-stress pipes. It qualifies and quantifies the number of wire breaks. The inspection can be either manned, robotic, or a pipe diver. We'll take a quick look at what these three inspection platforms are. This slide takes a quick look at the cross-section of the pre-stressed concrete pipe. The structural strength in a pre-stressed concrete pipe basically is provided by the concrete and the pre-stressing wires that are wrapped around the steel cylinder, or the concrete case in this case. Over the period of time, the pre-stressing wires will break and once these breaks occur, the structural strength of the pipe is considered to be compromised. This slide here shows a subtle difference between the embedded cylinder and a line cylinder pipe. In the, in the top example here, the pre-stressing wires are separated from the steel can by a thick layer of concrete. In the case of a line cylinder pipe, the pre-stressing wires rest directly on top of the steel can. So regardless of the pipe type that a power plant may have, the electromagnetic inspection applies for both the pipe types. Some of the causes that would deteriorate the pipes. Leaking joints, that's, that's very important here. It could lead to corrosion, the cracking of the outer motor coating, Transients, if there is a sudden interruption in the service of the valve or the pump, it sets off a transient or water hammer inside the pipe that would damage the pipe. And there are also some external factors. For instance, in power plants, it's not uncommon to see uh, heavy rail cars or trucks crossing the, uh, the path of the pipeline. So the external dynamic load also puts stress on the pipe as well. Let's take a look at some of the different uh, steps in the PCCP deterioration. The first step would be the cracking of the outer motor. 
Once the mortar is cracked or the protective layer is cracked, the pre-stressing wires are exposed and either due to corrosion or embrittlement, we'll start seeing this wire breaking. That's the third step here, the wires will start breaking. After the wires start breaking, a significant number is reached where the motor coating starts delaminating. Then we see the inside concrete core also starting delaminating. The core starts cracking, and then a catastrophic failure occurs. That is what a failure would look like in a high pressure line. It's not uncommon to see a, a 50 or 60 foot fountain in a high pressure line shooting water up here when a failure occurs. Our intention by providing a, a comprehensive condition assessment program is to capture all those pipes when the wires have started breaking. So much ahead of the failure step, we'll be able to capture those pipes and identify them and help the clients manage the risk. In this, in this photograph here, we see what a transient can do to a pre-stressed pipe. It basically unzipped the pipe in this example and created a catastrophic failure. The basics of electromagnetics. In this case, this example here, we put a tool inside the pipe and as the tool travels along the length of the pipe, it's creating a magnetic file for in each individual pipe. In this example here, three pipes were identified with wire breaks. And how we know that these pipes have got wire breaks is we see a shift in the signal. By identifying the magnitude of the shift, we're able to analyze the number of wire breaks. In this example here, the right-hand side pipe has, was found to be the pipe with the most broken wires. Once the, inspection and, uh, once the inspection is completed, the data is analyzed. In this example here, we see that pipe number six, seven, and eight, they have no wire breaks. There's no shift in the signals. So the amplitude and the phase signals remain in their position. In pipe number nine, 10, and 11, we see the signals have shifted this would identify some amount of distress. Through a, a, a detailed analysis process, we're able to determine the location of these wire breaks and the number of these wire breaks. This slide here shows the three different platforms available for electromagnetic inspection. On the left side, you see the P-Wave or the CART, which is a man inspection. In this case, the pipe has to be 36 inches and above in diameter because we put a team or a crew inside the pipe. Our, our team is experienced and have got the current confined space entry training. The line needs to be dewatered and should be safe for the entry. With the second inspection, the robotic inspection, we can do any pipes 18 inches and above, or actually 16 inches sometimes and above in diameter. The line is not dewatered, only depressurized. The robotic system is introduced inside the pipe. It's also used as a platform to bundle other technologies like CCTV, laser, sonar, GIS mapping. The cable attached to the robot is approximately 8,000 foot long cable. So through one insertion, approximately three miles of pipe can be inspected. And then the third platform available is the pipe diver. This is used for PCCP or pre-stressed pipes 24 inches and above in diameter. The pipe remains in service. The tool is introduced and launched through a launch tube inside a pipe through a, a opening. With the flow of water, the tool will travel through the length of the pipe and will be extracted at a predetermined location through an extraction device. The data is then downloaded and analyzed like a regular inspection. Uh, uh, EM inspection. So this is a free swimming tool. This tool was developed in response to industry's request to have a system available whereby the client does not need to dewater the pipe. Here's an example of what a, a electromagnetic inspection report would look like. In this case, a pipe 1500 millimeters and 1800 millimeter diameter pipe was inspected and I've just taken a screen capture of the 10 worst pipes. In this example here, the pipe number 1151 was found to have 150 wire breaks. And through this report, the client will know the exact locations of those wire breaks within that each individual pipe. 
What this does is this is a, 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 a classic example of where your weak links are. Once the inspection is done, this will identify all the pipes with the number of broken wires. So some of the questions that may come up quickly on electromagnetic before we jump on to magnetic flux leakage. Um, what are the factors that influence EM result? Well, first of all, the data that we get from the client is very important. Any information that is provided by the client is useful. By, by, by that, I mean um, drawings, any repairs that was done, um, any kind of changes that were made to the pipeline, pressure class, operating parameters, all that information is important for us. A question that we have here is, can you inspect pipes with slopes? Uh, yes, in fact, in um, California, where we've seen some, uh, some uh, terrains with slopes, we have inspected pipes, and we've used uh, rope assist to, to help uh, our, our crew inside the pipe. Um, question here is, is, how long would it take to inspect approximately 5,000 feet of pipe? Well, typically in a power plant, uh, you know, the intake and discharge lines combined tend to be anywhere between uh, 3,000 to 5,000 feet, and we would be able to do the inspection in a day. Uh, another question here is, how long would it take to get the results of the report? So what happens is once the electromagnetic inspection is completed, the data is analyzed. It takes anywhere between five to six weeks to analyze the data and prepare the report, after which this report is given to our engineering group, and that would take approximately a week to two weeks to provide the structural report. Let's, let's take a look at what magnetic flux leakage, or MFL, is. MFL, by the way, is, is, is a very well accepted and widely used technology in oil and gas. It's used for steel, ductile, and cast iron pipes. The powerful magnets will see through the motor coating and will find the condition of the metal pipe behind the motor coating. The current tools available for MFL are 8 inches, 10, 12, 24, 54, and 72 inch diameter pipes. The principle of MFL is used to find pittings or corrosions or the wells inside this metal pipes. Through using uh, IDOD sensors, we're also able to tell whether the damage is occurring on the inside of the pipe or the outside of the pipe. The magnetic sensors are quarter inch apart, and then the reports are provided in a B and a C scan data. The next slide will show us what the tools are. These are the available tools currently. We're also in the process of making uh, other tools in different diameter ranges. This is a B plot, basically. What we see here on the top left corner is, is the magnetic flux leakage occurred. So we saw a shift in the signals. And at the bottom right, also, we saw some damage in the pipe. In this example here, the client had gone ahead and done a field verification. And what they found at that location was exactly what we saw on the uh, B scans. There was some corrosion over there and additional corrosion in that location there as well. So in a power plant, if there are metal pipes that need any kind of inspection, uh, we would be happy to take a look at those pipelines and possibly look at MFL as a tool available to understand the condition or to assess the condition of those metal pipes. So before we go get into leak detection, a quick question here is, can MFL be used in non-piggable lines? And the answer is yes. Um, we would need to take a look at the drawings and come up with a project plan. But yes, it is possible to use MFL in pipelines that are not geared for pigging operations, as, as we would see in oil and gas pipelines. Let's take a look at some of the technologies available to detect leaks. The question may come up is, in a power plant, why is it important to find le uh, leaks? Well, a pipe that is leaking will get worse. And it's important to find if there is any pipe leaking, so that can be fixed before a failure occurs. The two internal leak location systems that we have, one is the smart ball. It's a patented technology. And the second one is the Sahara. Both of these tools are inline inspection tools that would, that would send the sensor directly to the leak location. And what that does is it improves the accuracy and the sensitivity of finding leaks. 
The smart ball is based on acoustic. It's used for water, wastewater, oil and gas pipelines. It's good for all pipe materials. It's good for 10 inches and above. And if you've got any smaller pipes that you're interested in, uh, in running some kind of uh, uh, leak, uh, by all means send us the information. We'll be happy to take a look at that. The tool itself is a free swimming tool. And what it means is through a launch uh, location, the, the, the smart ball is introduced inside the pipe. And with the flow of water, it will travel through the length of the pipe, continuously listening for any leaks and recording that particular uh, event. At the other end, the tool is extracted out. And then the core of the smart ball, where the electronics and the memory card is located, that data is downloaded, analyzed, and a report is prepared. The second technology we have is Sahara. It is another acoustic system to find leaks in water, wastewater pipelines, and also finds gas pockets. It's a tethered system. It provides real-time information Again, it's good for all pipe types, 10 inches and above, but we have used the Sahara system in smaller pipes as well. And we've also added a camera option that allows the operators to take a look at the pipe or the condition of the valves inside the pipe whilst the pipe remains in service. In this slide here, we see what a Sahara system looks like. We've got the acoustic sensor, which is attached to a cable. The cable is approximately 5,000 foot long, neutrally buoyant cable. Through an insertion point, two inch insertion point, the acoustic sensor and the cable is introduced inside a pipe. The pipe remains in service. Through the flow of water, the parachute will be propelled and it will drag the sensor and the cable through the length of the pipe. The technician who is near the truck will be constantly listening to any kind of leaks. And once a leak location is found, they'll stop feeding the cable. And then the second technician who is on the ground with the locating device will mark the exact location of the leak. With the camera option, as I said, we can also put the camera inside the pipe and take a look at the condition of the pipe whilst the, remain, whilst the pipe remains in service. So before we go any further, there are some questions here on leaks. The first question is, um, what are the operating parameters? So in both cases here, we need a minimum flow of one foot per second. And in the case of uh, Sahara, the pressure at the entrance or the uh, insertion should not exceed 200 PSI. There, there are a wide variety of operating parameters. And if you've got anything specific, by all means, let us know. We'd be happy to work with that. The other question is, what's the smallest leak that can be found with these technologies? Because these are very sensitive systems, these leaks can be found, or, or smallest leaks can be found. The smallest leak that has been recorded is quarter gallon an hour leak. Let's take a look at what the engineering services provide from pure technologies. We would do the visual inside a pre-stressed pipe, sounding, engineering analysis, if, you, if a client is interested, we would provide information on and consulting services for tunneling, micro-tunneling, pipe jacking, directional drilling, as well as pipe design and installation. What does visual and sounding inspection entail? In this case here, what we see here is the train operator inside the pipe or technician is, is looking for cracks. With the sounding, they would impact the wall of the pipe to listen for areas of delaminations or hollows. And they would also look at the joint conditions here. Any information that they find useful will be captured, logged, and submitted as a part of the report. The engineering evaluation basically takes all the information that was taken through data analysis, inspection, sounding, and visual. And this is prepared and provided into a report, what we call the risk performance curve. In this case here, 
we plot the number of wire breaks against the pressure class or the pressure, the operating pressure, and this would allow us to determine whether the pipe is residing in a low, medium, or high risk. So the question we have here is how is visual and sounding performed? The visual portion of the inspection consists of observing visual uh, features and cracks indicative of potential distress. Basically what, we are what uh, the operator is going to be looking for is any kind of cracks that are abnormal and particularly the length and the width of the cracks that would indicate the lack of pre-stressing or distress in the pipe. The visual inspection will also include examination of joints as well as width of the joints and the amount of pull the pipe was subjected, for instance. In case of sounding, the sounding is done by impacting the interior wall of the pipe with steel rod and will listen for hollow areas indicative of any kind of delaminations. These areas will be map mapped out and photographs of the cracks and delaminations will be taken. So what, what we get basically is a comprehensive report from inspection, visual, sounding, and engineering analysis. So coming back to the slide which showed the capturing of the weak link and managing of the risk, by using these tools available, uh, inspection tools, engineering tools, we would allow the um, inspection process and the client would get an idea about the condition of the pipe. If they find any weak links, these weak links will be repaired or replaced before a failure occurs. The value proposition is through the use of proven technologies and engineering expertise. We will offer power plants a strong and economical option to assess and monitor the critical pipes. Through the use of these technologies, you will be able to minimize the net present value of dollars spent to maintain critical pipes by deferring replacement or rehabilitation until it is absolutely necessary. Again, coming back to the slide where the water agencies 20 years, 30 years uh, ago were faced with nothing but uh, having some kind of failure and then waiting for the pipe to fail before they would do any kind of repairs or rehabilitation. Now we don't need to wait for the failure to occur. We are able to find those weak pipes and capture them before they fail. And based on the risk analysis, we would offer tools to the client where they would be able to decide whether they need to repair or replace the pipes. So in conclusion, we say assess and address. And yes, it is possible. Through these inspection technologies, it is possible to manage your risk and manage your assets. With this, I open the floor to question and answers. And if you so want, my email address is, uh, is on the screen. Feel free to send me an email with your uh, questions. There's a lot of information on our website as well, uh, www.puretechlimited.com. And anytime you have any questions, again, that email address is there. I'd like to thank you for your time today, and I'll just wait for any kind of questions. Well, it looks like most of the questions were already asked. So with this, I would conclude the seminar today, and again, thank you for joining.